Um, welcome everyone to the um, to the session intro to CNCF SIG storage. Um, we hope we'll uh, let you uh, find out more about what the SIG has been working on and um, and how we're working with the with the TOC. Um, and we'll start off with uh, with Quinton, who's going to give us a bit of a, a description of how the SIGs work. Hi, uh, I'm Quinton Houle. Some of you might have seen me in previous lives in different roles. Uh, I work for Futureway uh, in the US. And uh, yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, this can be a very interactive session, so don't be shy to interrupt me if you have questions or comments. Uh, those will be most welcome. Um, Alex and I will be doing the presentation. We are co-chairs of the CNCF SIG storage, uh, as together with Aaron, who's sitting right over there. Um, <clears throat> and. Uh, and we also we'll go through some other details. We have some tech leads, et cetera, as well. So first of all, yeah, I'd like to just give you an overview of what is a what is a CNCF SIG. I'm sure many of you might have come across uh, Kubernetes SIGs in the past. SIG stands for Special Interest Group, of course, which is common with many other computing organizations around the world. Uh, the CNCF SIGs are different from the Kubernetes SIGs in the sense that uh, Kubernetes SIGs tend to be very focused on Kubernetes-specific uh, implementations, projects, etc. Uh, CNCF SIGs have a slightly different role to play. Uh, as you're familiar with by now, the CNCF is composed of a you know, wide variety of projects, uh, end users, etc. And so what we have done, um, well, let me, let me not jump ahead of, of myself here. Um, so, so the original conception of the CNCFs was, was created by the TOC, actually, the Technical Oversight Committee, which is the group of people that are elected to represent the CNCF on all technical matters, choosing which projects are in and out, et cetera. Um, and as the CNCF itself has grown, uh, I've personally been at every KubeCon since day one. The first one probably had, uh, I don't want to exaggerate, but less than 100 people. The second one probably had 400, and then you know it was 4,000, 10,000. Uh, I don't even know what the numbers are today, but it's well north of 10,000, as I understand. The num say again? 17,000. 17, there we go. So uh, we're, we're growing. Let's just say that. Um, so as this this has grown, obviously the number of projects has grown as well. The first, uh, you know, the first. Uh, KubeCon, we probably had, I don't remember off the top of my head, six or seven projects. I believe we have 40 now, you know, at least uh, close to 10 of which are graduated. Um, so the amount of um, bandwidth required of the TOC, the TOC is still the same size as it was on day one. So in order to uh, allow it to scale, uh, we decided to form these special interest groups, partition the, the technical space up into about six or seven areas, and then uh, enable the community to get involved in, the, in their areas of speciality, and storage is obviously one of those. Um, you can look for details. There's some links on the screen there if you want to find out some more about what the SIGs are and what they do. <coughs> um, the main objectives are to strengthen the project ecosystem, so that involves taking existing CNCF projects, making sure they're healthy, uh, making sure that they're, they're not running into any problems. I've been kind of parachuted into one or two of them that ran into some some issues and we managed to sort those out. We also need to identify gaps uh, in the ecosystem. Clearly, we, we you know we're over, over the years, we've, we've built up a reasonable portfolio of projects, but there's still some fairly glaring holes in that, in that uh, ecosystem. Uh, storage, I think, is actually fairly well covered, but uh, we'll go into that a little later. <clears throat> uh, we also want to educate and inform users about the particular uh, area of that, that, that is covered by that SIG. So to give you an example, I don't know if we have them in the slides here. Uh, we, maybe we'll carry them, carry them over later, or uh, mention them later. But there's, you know, security, storage, networking, the, the fairly obvious areas that you would imagine. Um, and a lot of these areas are, are non-trivial. Storage, in particular, you know, there are many different layers of storage, block up to objects and databases, etc. And there are different, you know, aspects of all of those things: the APIs, the management, the, the properties of the storage. So. There's quite a lot to, to kind of wrap your head around to, to be able to make sense of, and so we try to do a lot of that hard work on behalf of all of the users um, so that they can consume some of our educational material. Um, fostering project maturity, so make sure the projects move forward, uh, eventually, hopefully, either graduate or in some cases we actually retire projects and archive them. Um, there are you know, many different 
projects in the CNCF, both within storage and elsewhere, uh, and we need to make sure we understand the relationships between them, how do they integrate together, work together, etc. cetera. Um, new TOC contributions and recognition for people who want to, you know, you may not yet be sufficiently experienced in, in this kind of environment to, to go and stand as a TOC member. These are very, uh, you know, seasoned individuals typically who've been around for a very long time. Um, but even if you're not feel, if you don't feel comfortable at that level yet, you can start by contributing to a SIG. Uh, you can graduate to a technical lead or a chair of a SIG, and then you can eventually, you know, perhaps work your way up to being on the technical oversight committee. Um, and yeah, one of the important aspects of all of this stuff is to be vendor neutral. Um, you know, there are a lot of competing vendors in the space. We, we like that fact. We think that, that it's very good that we have this very healthy ecosystem of commercial vendors, but you know, one does also have to be mindful of the fact that sometimes these, uh, there, there are competitive situations that can arise that are not in the interests of the community or in the interests of the CNCF in general. So that, that's another one of our roles being vendor neutral, making sure that we disseminate accurate, objective information as best we can. Uh, I think I'm going to skip over some of these details. Um, we have, you know, all of this stuff is documented on the CNCF website. Uh, if you want to find out more about the SIGs, uh, what their functions are, um, you, can, you can find out some of the detail there. Um, end user education, I think we've, we've covered. Um, Many of the SIGs, uh, so of the several that we've actually uh, specified, not all of them are actually operational yet. There are one or two that are still busy bootstrapping. Um, but SIG storage is one of the older ones uh, and has actually done quite a lot of work. And Alex is going to be talking a bit more about that in a moment. We, we gather input from uh, end users. Uh, we do various community enablement uh, kinds of exercises. And we form uh, or, or we perform a function as trusted expert advisors to the TOC. So the, the, the TOC members are typically, you know, very many of them are CEOs of companies, etc. They don't necessarily have the bandwidth. Many of them have the technical acumen and the experience, uh, but they don't necessarily have the time to do a lot of the hard work that gets done. Uh, for example, in doing technical due diligences on projects that apply to be part of the CNCF, we we want to make sure that they get included at the correct. The appropriate level. Um, we don't want to have, you know, relatively young projects with with inappropriate levels of stability or, or community involvement being, you know, as, uh, promoted to to levels that indicate that they're something other than that. Um, and we have a logo. This is the new Sig Storage logo. Uh, I think approved probably a week ago, Alex. We're very proud of our new logo. We even have stickers. If anyone wants a SIG storage sticker for your laptop or otherwise, um, stick around afterwards. Hopefully, Alex has a pocket full of them. <clears throat> um, why is storage so critical? So now we're moving on to the you know, more storage-specific stuff and less about uh, TOC, uh, rather um, SIGs in general. Um, so there's a lot of talk about stateless applications. People, you know, say, "Oh, well, the, everybody's applications are stateless." There's no, there's really genuinely no such thing as a stateless application. All applications have some or other state. Uh, they store it somewhere. Sometimes they delegate that storage to, you know, a public cloud provider service or something else. But very few real-world applications are truly stateless. So the question is, where do you store it? How do you store it? What are the properties of the storage that you need? And it tends to be, you know, very uh, critical to, to many applications. Um, cloud native storage in particular is, is a little different than the traditional storage systems that were perhaps in use before the cloud came along. Uh, many of them tended to be fairly centralized, um, often enter, you know, com very expensive commercial kinds of storage. Um, there's been a shift, as you're probably aware, over the last decade and a half um, towards more software-oriented, more distributed kinds of storage. Um, they provide scalability properties that are, in some cases, more suitable to certain kinds of applications than more monolithic storage solutions. They're often more portable as well because you can, you know, you can run these these storage solutions on different public clouds or on-premise. Um, and there's a lot of integration between the various different storage uh, provided uh, the storage systems that are provided, so they they, they work well together. Um, 
what is our mission statement? So we want to enable widespread and successful uh, adoption of storage uh, in cloud native environments through many of the things that I've already mentioned. Uh, objective information, collaboration, um, making sure that the projects that we have uh, are and remain healthy, and then finding projects to fill the gaps that we believe might exist within the portfolio of projects within CNCF. Um, we, we cover you know, everything you could reasonably consider to be storage, we consider to be in scope. Um, so this includes block stores, file systems, object stores, databases, key value stores, and all the related caching mechanisms that are typically uh, found around these things. And what we want to really uh, focus on is, is understanding, and this is an area where people get some, sometimes a little confused. Um, I just had a look at the time. Did I just overshoot my time dramatically? <laughs> um, uh, we we want to really make sure that people understand the fundamental characteristics of the different kinds of storage, so that things like availability, scalability, performance, durability, consistency, these are all you know, pretty words, but there's, there's quite a lot of detailed content underneath those words, uh, and it's important when you're making a, trying to make a choice between different storage solutions, um, and Subu's here, one of our tech leads on, on SIG storage. Um, it's important that you, you have a you know, fairly clear understanding of, of what these things mean and what the various trade-offs are. Uh, there is really genuinely no you know, one-size-fits-all here. There are always trade-offs between these various properties, and it's a question of fitting the correct set of trade-offs to, to your particular application to make sure that it makes sense. Um, this is a list of the people that I've, some of whom I've mentioned already. Uh, Aaron is sitting in the third row. Sugu is sitting in the first row. And uh, Ying is here as well. Uh, Xing, sorry. Uh, and I think some of the others are missing. Uh, Saad, I'm not sure if he's around. Um, but they're, they're all at the conference for the most part. Um, didn't necessarily make it today. Uh, and then we have you know, a bunch of interactions with other related groups. Uh, there's a CSI group. The, container storage interface group working on interfacing primarily between Kubernetes or containers in general um, and storage solutions. Um, there's a security SIG. Obviously, there's a lot of security-related issues around storage, um, you know, where you store it, how you encrypt it, et cetera. Um, App SIG, there's, that's another CNCF SIG, focuses around development, <coughs> deployment, and operation of applications, and much of that is... Uh, a subset of that is actually the, the storage-related aspects of it. Um, and there's a Kubernetes application SIG as well, which, which does Kubernetes-specific aspects of application deployment and development. Right. At this point, I think I'm going to hand over to Alex, who's going to tell you more about what we've actually done. Cool. Thank you, Quentin. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've been working on over the last uh, over the last uh, year and the last uh, specifically some of the work we've been doing since uh, KubeCon in Barcelona. So we have been um, we have been working really quite hard with the new process since the SIGs were um, established in in just over six months ago now in in Barcelona, even though it feels like an age ago. Um, where we've been um, helping to review um, a number of different um, storage projects. Um, we've produced the CNCF storage landscape white paper, um, which describes some of the, some of the um, uh, storage functionality and, and topologies that we've been talking about today. Um, and we've also created a storage survey for, for CNCF end users to, to help gather information on what's important uh, in the end user community. Um, Right now, we're focusing on um, extending the, the um, storage landscape white paper to add a database section, which Sugu is working on. Um, we're um, uh, adding documentation for community-driven use cases. So the community-driven use cases are, are um, effectively uh, what we're hoping to grow into a community-based um, repository where we'll be able to cover best practices um, uh, and storage recommendations for, for different types of uh, use cases with cloud native storage. Um, and we're also working on a performance and benchmarking white paper. 
So we've had um, a number of different project presentations um, covering everything from um, databases as well as things like CSI, uh, different uh, storage products um, in, which cover everything from block to, to file system. Um, and recently we were, we were also um, reviewing uh, Dragonfly, which is a, 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 um, a container registry. So when we're looking at the different projects, we're, we're looking to um, uh, help uh, raise awareness of the project, um, but primarily we're there to gather and um, uh, to gather feedback for the, uh, presentation to the TOC. So, so effectively, part of this this scaling process with the TOC um, means that we can provide them with the information needed and a bit more of a technical um, review uh, of the project before they have a, a, a TOC project presentation. So, over the last um, over the perhaps the last 18 months, there have been a number of um, CNCF uh, storage projects that have gone through the process. Um, Rook uh, was accepted as a sandbox project and is now a very successful uh, incubation project. Um, Minio is in the process too. Vitesse, as you've probably seen from uh, Sugu on, on the keynote stage uh, yesterday, uh, just graduated, um, which is, which is uh, an amazing milestone and achievement. Um, etcd, which is, uh, which is the, the key value store behind uh, most Kubernetes uh, deployments, um, is, is, is part of that project. Um, similarly, uh, TIKV, which is, uh, which is a sandbox project and now an incubation project, which is another um, key value store and also the basis for the um, uh, TIDB database. Um, OpenEBS and Longhorn um, are both uh, new sandbox projects as well in the last six months, um, which are providing uh, block storage and, um, and a volume interface uh, as open source projects. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the storage landscape white paper. So the white paper covers um, a bunch of information that users deploying applications in Kubernetes would find useful. Um, so we're looking at um, this as, as part of sort of our educational mandate. Um, we're coming across um, more and more um, end users who are having to evaluate and make storage decisions for the first time, perhaps because um, in, their, in their previous organizations, um, storage was, um, was an infrastructure decision which, which, um, which, they, which they didn't normally take part of, right? So the nice thing is that there are there's quite a, um, a wide storage landscape available, um, covering everything from you know, commercial implementations and open source implementations and, and cloud services. So, so you know, to be deployed on-prem or, or in cloud. Um, and each of those systems have, have a bunch of different attributes. So we, we, tried, to, um, we tried to define um, the attributes that, of these different storage systems so that you can match them with what your application um, requires. We also made, um, made a decision to, to make sure that storage wasn't just interpreted as a volume. So we, we kind of grouped storage into two main categories, um, one in a volume bucket and one in, in that have application APIs, right? So, so the volumes are, are things like um, block stores and um, file systems and shared file systems, um, and the application APIs um, include things like um, databases and key value stores and object stores. Um, and we also worked um, quite hard to, to define the management interfaces, which are obviously really important to make storage um, a first-class declarative um, uh, resource in, in Kubernetes, right? Because in, in much the same way that your pod definition can now uh, define the CPU requirements and the memory requirements and the network requirements, um, you should also just be able to define your storage requirements and the attributes of, of that storage. So, we we split the, the the storage attributes into into five main groups: availability, scalability, performance, consistency, and durability. Um, and in reality, you know, different storage systems have pros and cons in each one of those groups. So, um, and 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 it's and it's very often that um, it's very often found that different. Um, 
uh, um, different uh, attributes in one area that are um, that that excel in one particular storage system mean that it has um, uh, you know consistent um, cons or or issues in in another area. So, so we look at you know things like um, availability, which include things like failover, but also the ability to move um, data between nodes and, and enable that that portability. Scalability can often be measured in terms of you know the number of clients or the operations per second or throughputs that that's going through a system. Um, and performance is is often measured in terms of latency operations or throughput. And different different systems have different requirements. So, for example, a database might have um, a very uh, uh, latency focused uh, requirement, whereas perhaps a, an analytics or or machine learning uh, use case might have a very throughput based focus. Um, and obviously, in all of these distributed systems, consistency and durability are also key, right? So um, many systems um, um, are engineered with a fine balance between performance and consistency in order to enable that scale. The other thing that we defined in the, in the um, landscape white paper is the different storage layers that you typically find within a storage system. So when we first started talking about this, we, we, we tried to categorize um, some of the attributes of storage systems based on how those storage systems are consumed. So perhaps you know, a block store might be known for low latency, and um, shared file might be um, particularly good for scaling, for example. Um, but the reality is that the, the, the different layers in a storage system are really um, important at defining what those actual storage attributes are. Um, so so the, the, the topology, um, the data protection that, that's applied, the data services like replication um, and, and encryption for security, for example. And then finally, the, the actual physical layer that the storage is using um, are much better uh, indicators of what, the, of what the attributes of that storage system is going to look like. Um, and this is even more important in the cloud native world where storage systems um, are often layered on top of each other, right? Where you, know, you might have um, a file system which is layered on top of an object store. So it might have the, the shared file properties of a shared file system, but the latency properties of an object store, for example. Um, and, and those are important things to understand. Um, the, the, some of the new things that we're working on, um, so the databases, um, addition to the white paper, this helps, um, this, this adds in uh, a database section to the white paper, which, which we um, missed out previously just due to lack of time. Um, uh, this is something that Sugu is working on together with uh, the rest of the SIG, um, and we're helping to define different database types, um, the different attributes of the different database types, um, and how things like um, consistency and durability impact the, the scalability and performance of those different databases. Um, we're also um, putting in quite a bit of work um, where, which have triggered a variety of uh, vendor neutral discussions um, around the use cases um, that, that uh, extend the, the white paper. So when we first put together the white paper, we said, okay, let's, um, let's document the landscape. Let's document all the different layers. Let's document the different topologies. And now the use cases are, um, are building on top of that so that we're able to say, for example, look, for these specific type of use cases, these are the types of storage systems that you should be looking at. So for example, a part, you know, this use case might be um, suitable for a shared file system. This use case might be more suitable for a sharded database, for example. Um, and to try and discuss some of the topologies um, and provide some additional backup with references and, and examples for, for that that tie into the, to the white paper. Um, we're also working on um, a storage performance white paper together with some of the Percona guys, which are in the back, and the Vitesse guys as well. Um, so thank you for all of the help. Um, so in the, in the performance white paper, um, we're, we're doing things like, um, we're, performance is, is one of these fiendishly, um, performance and benchmarking is one of these fiendishly complicated things, and it's, it's, it's very hard to do it right. So we're, we're trying to um, you know, define the concepts um, and you know, the units of measurement, for example, um, for things like volumes and databases, but we're also making a conscious effort to define 
all the common pitfalls and considerations. And, and, and so far, there's probably more content on the pitfalls and considerations than, than there is on the, on the, actual, on the actual benchmarking process. So um, the, 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 the key takeaway here is that, you know, don't look at published results for making comparisons when selecting, when selecting products. Do run uh, your, own, uh, your own benchmarks. Um, because it's, it's without a deep understanding of the exact um, environment that the benchmark is, is run in, it's really hard to make an apples to apples comparison. Um, and in that respect, then, we're, we're, the, the document goes on to actually define um, different benchmarking tools for benchmarking volumes and databases, along with um, a number of um, uh, tips on how to um, level set the, the, the environments that you're using for, for the benchmarking. Um, and finally, please do get involved. All of the um, SIG storage is uh, meetings are done in public. Um, we meet uh, twice a month on the second and fourth Wednesday. Um, the, the, the repo um, is part of the CNCF uh, GitHub repository. Um, all of our meeting minutes and, and the mailing lists are public too. Um, and what we specifically would like help with is um, we'd like you to provide any information you can um, and fill in the CNCF storage survey. This really helps um, provide um, the focus and the information that we, for the, the next set of projects and the ne next set of activities that we're looking at. Um, please look at the, the, the sample templates that we've started putting together in the, uh, in the use case repo. Um, we're hoping to build that out with, with um, contributions from the community too. So if you're running a project and you know, you're, you're, you're fed up with um, users asking you what the, what the best source solution is, contribute to the repo and we can start pointing uh, users that way. Um, obviously, if um, we're we're also very keen to to have uh, any help uh, in both uh, reviewing um, or contributing uh, contents to to our performance and database white papers, which are in progress, um, and we're also looking for. Um, uh, we're always looking for tech leads that can help with um, project reviews, um, and that mean you know that includes reviewing um, existing projects uh, during part of their you know annual uh, or periodic reviews, um, as well as uh, reviewing new projects which are being considered for for um, for sandbox, for example. Um, and finally, we'd really love to know if you see gaps in the landscape or gaps in the in the in the set of projects where you think um, there are particular projects that would make really good additions to, to the CNCF portfolio. So um, anything, anything, um, any sort of uh, um, feedback there would be really great. So with that, that covers all of the slides. Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming. And if you have any questions, it would be great to, uh, to have a discussion now. Yeah, you can probably talk loud enough. Check. So, I think that um, disaster recovery is uh, mainly a storage discussion, not only, but mainly. So I wanted to ask if it, you guys think it's uh, in your charter and what you're doing about it. Um, Absolutely, yeah. So, so in fact, the the storage um, landscape white paper already talks about um, things like um, uh, replication and failover capabilities, as well as um, things like uh, data protection, point in time copies of of data, for example. But are you are you referring to perhaps um, specific yeah, uh, projects? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see if we can have uh, some reference architecture on how to do disaster recovery in a con cloud native or container native way, not just talk about the basic you know, attributes, but really provide some reference architecture maybe with the, with the product that we sponsor. documentation I think it would be super useful to you know what the use cases aim to do is say you know here's a, a fairly concrete problem and this is how 
one might solve it, and these are the pros and cons, and maybe there's two or three ways of solving that. And I think the disaster recovery use case is a very useful one. So if, if you're, I don't know if you're feeling, are you wanting to be a consumer of such a, such a guidance, or, or are you uh, feel equipped to provide such guidance? Uh, okay. Well, that, 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 would, that would be fantastic. We'd, we'd love to have that. Thank you. I just wanted to give a comment that um, Alex, Quinton, and Erin have nicely moderated that group. It's really cordial <laughs> and amicable. Thank you. Well, we, we, we hope everything is, is, is always being um, friendly. Um, sometimes with for some complex topics, uh, discussions get involved, but I think we do well. So we would welcome more members always. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the talk. Thank you. Um, I just want to know if those first draft uh, sections that are pending now, will those be available for you know, the general us people to read before they're finalized? Oh, absolutely. So, so they're, they're going through a review process right now. So you'll find, um, you'll find links uh, to all of those in the, in the repo and in the meeting minutes. Yeah, everything here is done in the open. There's no, you know, back room where things get produced. Um, sometimes you might have to dig a bit, and the best way to do it is, you know, email the SIG and say, where are you guys working on this, you know, document, and you'll be able to get a link and, and comment and complain and yeah. contribute. So jo join the mailing lists. Comments are very appreciated. I mean, I think we went through something like 500 when we were doing the landscape white paper. Uh, just a basic question, like to listen in, I guess, on your uh, weekly or bi-weekly sync ups, would I need to, like, like, do I need someone's permission or to reach out or something, or can I just dial in on Zoom? No, just, just join the mailing list um, and, and join the Zoom call, um, and you'll be more than welcome. Uh, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the procedure is you just join the mailing list, you will automatically get an invitation to all the meetings, uh, which has the link to the Zoom uh, room in it, uh, and I believe you will get permission to all the documents as well, typically. Uh, and, you know, in theory, if somebody sends obscenities to the mailing list, they will get removed, uh, but as long as you don't do that, you should be fine. <laughs> Last call for questions, comments? Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>